Dear shareholders, dear shareholder representatives, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you warmly and open the annual general meeting of Daimler AG in 2019. As a chairman of the supervisory board, I am taking over the chairmanship in accordance with the Articles of Association. Before we enter the agenda, we want to honor our dead. I'm asking you to stand up. We commemorate the diseased employees and pensioners since the last annual general meeting, as well as all those diseased people who felt connected to our company. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Daimler's 2018 financial year reflects the changes and global challenges in the automotive industry as well as the unbroken enthusiasm for our vehicles. Daimler's success is based on a deep automotive expertise and strategic foresight. Daimler's strategy for a locally emission-free mobility is designed to allow customers to make their own contribution to climate protection. In general, the question arises as to the future of individual mobility. It's one of the central challenges facing the automotive industry. It is certainly no longer sufficient to offer fascinating cars with promising drive systems alone. It is up to automobile manufacturers to reinvent mobility solutions in urban agglomerations. Daimler and its employees are therefore working intensively on the further development of sustainable digital mobility and transport concepts and drive technologies. For example, Daimler has significantly increased its advanced investment in innovations for the future in 2018. In order to be able to deal with all these issues, the performance in the core business must be right. And I would like to thank all of our employees and the members of the Board of Management of Daimler AG for this. They are all working with passion to ensure that your company continues to play an important and leading role in mobility in the future and to help shape it. The management board and supervisory board will propose a dividend of 3 euros 25 per share to the annual general meeting today. The proposal takes into account the financial year and the challenges of the future as well as our dividend continuity target. Daimler aims to be a leader in the new world of mobility. This requires a high degree of innovation and flexibility in order to react quickly to changes, take advantage of new growth opportunities and continue to be successful in the future. The future project gives Daimler a corporate structure that supports its strategic orientation. With the three legally independent companies, Mercedes-Benz AG, Daimler Trucks AG and Daimler Mobility AG, we will be able to respond more effectively to customer and market needs in the future and enter into targeted cooperations. Daimler AG, as the holding company, strengthens cooperation and cohesion. The supervisory board supports the restructuring and is convinced that strong customer-oriented divisions will significantly increase Daimler's speed and flexibility in view of the technical and financial challenges facing the industry. Following my introductory words, Dr. Zetsche and I will present to you, in accordance with the provisions of the German Transformation Act, the necessary measures for restructuring which are regulated within the spin-off agreement. And please understand that, but the legal requirements are such that uh, this will take some time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, last year I announced to you at this point that the supervisory board was working on the realignment of the remuneration of the board of management and that it would also give greater consideration to Daimler's sustainability strategy. Today we're submitting to you for approval a correspondingly adjusted system for the remuneration of the board of management under item 6. The adjustments are described in detail in the annual report starting on page 125 within the remuneration report. Report. What is the motivation behind the adjustments? The fundamental techno technological changes, a newly composed competitive environment and new mobility requirements of customers, as well as the significant investments in new technologies and services required as a result are to be given greater consideration in the remuneration of the management board in the future. Our central concern in the adjustment is to align the incentives with the implementation of the new corporate strategy, future-proof transformation and sustainability. Daimler AG wants to remain a leading vehicle manufacturer and at the same time develop into a leading provider of mobility. It also seeks to strengthen collective non-financial objectives and criteria, reduce methodological complexity and increase transparency. Our proposal adopts the principle of pay for performance from the previous remuneration system. Around 55% of the target remuneration is derived from medium and long-term variable remuneration components and is thus oriented towards sustainable corporate performance. Both the limitation of the maximum target achievement of the individual variable remuneration components and the cap on the maximum total remuneration attainable in a financial rear remain unchanged. This is limited to 1.9 times the target remuneration for ordinary executive board members and 1.7 times the target remuneration for the future chairman of the executive board. The adjustments mainly relate to annual bonus. The previous actual, actual comparison is omitted for the financial targets. With regard to non-financial targets, a clear sharpening of the targets is aimed at through stronger quantification and, as the core element, the joint performance value, which was previously based on individual target agreements with the management board, is replaced by transformation targets. These are derived divisionally from the case future fields connected, autonomous, shared in services, electric, and from sustainability aspects. The supervisory board reconciles the achievement of the transformation targets with the achievement of the targets jointly set by the management board as a whole, taking into account the strategic, organizational and structural contribution of the management board as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, as in previous years, last year we again had to deal with antitrust issues and proceedings in connection with diesel exhaust emissions. In April of this year, the EU Commission issued statements of objections in which BMW, Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche and our company are accused of having infringed EU competition regulations in connection with the development and introduction of exhaust gas pure purification technologies for new diesel and petrol passenger cars, which the Commission has now extended to innovation launches. Let me stress that your company has worked and continues to work closely and confidentially with the authorities in this process, as in all other matters. We therefore assume that we will not be fined in these proceedings. With regard to the confidentiality required as part of the ongoing proceedings, I ask for your understanding that we cannot currently provide any further details in the interest of the company. However, I can assure you that the supervisory board and the executive board have done and are doing everything in their power to clarify the events and circumstances in question in all cases and to take the necessary measures. The truck case, which has already been closed by the authorities, also, also continued to occupy the supervisory board, not least against the background of the pending antitrust actions for damages brought by truck customers last year. 
The supervised report, with the involvement of an independent law firm, examined whether and to what extent former or current members of the executive board should be held accountable in connection with antitrust matters or exhaust emissions. In so doing, it has decided to maintain its previous decision to refrain from recourse at present, taking into account the company's welfare. In doing so, the supervisory board examined each case in detail and ensured that there is currently no danger of the statute of limitations becoming statute barred. Last year, we also asked Professor Dr. Habersack, another independent expert, to examine whether the supervisory board had full fulfilled its duties in this respect. Against this background, Professor Dr. Habersack has updated his statement from last year on the developments that have occurred in the meantime in antitrust matters. He came to the conclusion that the supervisory board fully complied with its duties. The statement was again made available to the shareholders this year on the Investor Relations page of the Daimler homepage. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to turn to the personnel of the Management Board and the Supervisory Board. In September 2018, the Supervisory Board approved the resignation of Dr. Dieter Zetsche from the Board of Management with effect, with effect from the end of today's annual general meeting in order to be eligible for election to the Supervisory Board of Daimler AG after a two-year cooling-off period. Dieter Zetsche is without doubt an exceptional manager. He led Daimler for 13 years and became the company brand like no other before. He joined Daimler in 1976 in the junior research group and has held a number of management positions. He was head of development in Brazil, president of Mercedes-Benz Argentina and CEO of Freightliner in the USA, to name but a few. He has been a member of the Board of Management since December 1998 and was appointed Chairman of the Board of Management of the former Daimler Chrysler AG in January 2006. In addition, he has headed the Mercedes-Benz Cars Division since 2005. Dieter Cheche has played a key role in shaping Daimler AG as a long-standing member of the Board of Management and Chairman of the Board of Management, be it through the necessary separation from Chrysler, resolution of the financial crisis in 2008 and 9, the realignment of the product range, including the design. Dieter Zetsche not only motivated the entire company with his target of we want to be the number one premium manufacturer again, but also achieved this ahead of schedule in 2016 compared to the 2020 target. He is an acknowledged business leader beyond the borders of Germany and a German business magazine therefore called him the only world-class business leader in the automotive industry. Peter Cheche has proven that he can lead Daimler AG even in difficult terrain and inspire its employee, employees with, a, with ambitious goals and for the future. He deserves our unrestricted gratitude. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As also announced in September 2018, Ola Kalenius will be appointed chairman of the Board of Management of Daimler AG and head of Mercedes-Benz Cars for a period of five years with effect from the end of today's annual general meeting. With Ola Kalenius, we are appointing a recognized, internationally experienced and successful manager from our own company who can also inspire people for a cause as chairman of the Board of Management and 
head of Mercedes-Benz Cars. At the same time, we're relying on the proven dual responsibility of the chairman of the board of management, who also heads Daimler's largest division. Ola Kalenius joined the group in 1995, and after several national and international management functions, was appointed member of the board of management with responsibility for Mercedes-Benz Cars sales for the first time with effect from January 15. In January 17, he assumed the responsibility for group research and Mercedes-Benz cars development. We welcome Ola Kalenius very warmly in the new responsibility. Ola, you can see there are a lot of expectations in the audience. Then I would like to inform you about the change in the management board department finance. In October 2018, Bodo Uber declared that he would not seek to extend his appointment, which runs until December 2019. With the approval of the supervisory board, he resigned from the management board with effect from the end of today's annual general meeting. Bodo Uber has been a member of the board of management of Daimler AG since 2003, and in this function, he's been responsible for finance and controlling at the Daimler Financial Services Division since 2004. He began his career in 1981 at the former Daimler-Benz AG, the aerospace subsidiary DASA. He then became a member of the management board of MTU Aero Engines GmbH. Bord Uber always had the basic strategic questions of the company in mind. Not least for this reason, he and his department were responsible for planning and designing the new group structure, Project Future. Uber was the reliable economic conscience of the company and has implement, implemented many initiatives in his area of responsibility and throughout the group. We thank Bodo Uber for his successful and intensive work and wish him all the best for the future. Such an applause does you really well, even after 13 years. In February 2019, the supervisory board appointed Harald Wilhelm to the board of management of Daimler AG for a period of three years, effective April 1, 2019, initially without his own board of management function. With the departure of Bodo Uber at the end of this annual general meeting, Harald Wilhelm will assume responsibility for finance and controlling Daimler Daimler Financial Services. Harold Wilhelm has held various management positions in the finance department of the Airbus Group, most recently as chief financial officer and member of the Airbus Executive Committee since 2012. With his many years of international expertise, he will provide Daimler with outstanding support in its transformation into a mobility provider and drive this strategic orientation forward. We have also taken account of the growing importance of capital markets and investors with the appointment of Harald Wilhelm. At the same time, we're continuing the generational change that has already begun on the management board. Welcome, Harald Wilhelm. In September 2018, the supervisory board appointed Markus Schäfer as a member of the management board for a period of five years with the effect from the end of the TAE's annual general meeting. He takes over group research and Mercedes-Benz cars development as successor to Ola Kalenius. Markus Schäfer demonstrated excellent leadership qualities and strategic vision in various technical management positions in the Mercedes-Benz cars division. He was appointed to the Board of Management of the Mercedes-Benz Cars Division in January 2014 and has since been responsible for production and supply chain management. We're delighted to welcome Markus Schäfer to the Board of Management in his new, particularly important position as Head of Development for the Passengers Cars Division.
In February 2019 as well, with effect from January 1st, 2020, the Supervisory Board reappointed Rita Sager as a member of the Board of Management for a further five years with responsibility for Mercedes-Benz car sales. Rita Sager leads the distribution of Mercedes-Benz cars with great success. Last year, Mercedes-Benz cars set another sales record in a challenging environment. She aligns sales and after-sales with the future and sets important strategic course for networking products, technologies and services. We're happy to continue our successful cooperation with Rita Sager. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to turn to the personnel changes in the Supervisory Board following the 2018 Annual General Meeting. The employee representative Wolfgang Nike left the Supervisory Board at the end of 2018. He was replaced by the elected substitute member Michael Heberle. The term of office of Joe Kaiser and Dr. Bernd Pichets, Pichetsrieder on the Supervisory Board ends at the end of today's meeting. On the basis of the recommendation recommendation of the nomination committee, Joe Kaiser and Dr. Bernd Pischitz-Reeder will be proposed for re-election under agenda item 7, each for a period of five years. Both candidates have many years of management experience and a strong knowledge of international markets, which they have already demonstrated outstandingly in their work as members of the supervisory board. The activity of Dr. Pichet's reader proves a maximum of automotive competence. In addition, Mr. Kaiser has special expertise in all aspects of finance. We would therefore be very pleased to continue our successful cooperation in the coming years. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot to do today. Let me therefore conclude with the legally necessary organizational information. And I have to read it out to you. I don't like that, but that's necessary. Because everything is written in the documentation you have. All the necessary information on the procedure, voting and granting of proxies if you leave the annual general meeting prematurely is in the brochure that you received received with a voting card block at the entrance. Please read them carefully. If you have not received the brochure yet, please contact the investor relations booth in the entrance area where it will be available for you again. Mr. Notary Raki, whom I hereby present to you, will notarize the annual general meeting. If you wish to make statements on the notary's minutes, please contact the notary, Dr. Krause, who will assist Mr. Racki with the certification. You will find Dr. Krause at the front right of the plenum. And there is a sign above. In addition to the plenary session, the presence zone includes all rooms which are open to you after passing the accreditation. Please refer to the information brochure for further details. If, after the opening of the debate, you wish to speak on the agenda, please go to the request to speak table here in the plenum, plenum now. There are no other request tables available. If you have a procedural motion, please put it on your request form so that we can prepare ourselves. However, the application must still be submitted orally by you. You can take the floor as long as the list of speakers is not closed. Nevertheless, please contact us as soon as possible so that we know approximately how many speakers we can expect. Should you follow the annual general meeting from another area of the present zone, you still have the opportunity to make your request to speak at the request table here in the plenum, to speak when called, and to make statements to the the notary's minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the Board of Management attended today's annual general meeting in full. Due to the postponement of our annual general meeting, only Sari Baldauf and Dr. Achleitner are unable to participate from the supervisory board. The agenda with the proposed resolutions and the spin-off agreement under agenda item 9 were published in the Federal Gazette with the convening of this annual general meeting on April 3rd, 2019. Since then, they have been available on the company's website together with other documents to be made available.
They can also be viewed today at the terminals on the back of the investor relations stand. The annual financial statements of Daimler AG, the consolidated financial statements and the combined management report of the company and the group for fiscal year 2018 were audited by KPMG AG, Wirtschaftsprüfungsgesellschaft Berlin, and issued with an unqualified audit opinion. On February 13, 2019, the Supervisory Board approved the annual financial statements of Daimler AG and the consolidated financial statements after its own review. The 2018 financial statements of Daimler AG are thus adopted. Ladies and gentlemen, as announced already, we now come to the explanations on Agenda Item 9 of today's annual general meeting. Dr. Zetsche will begin, and I will then explain the Supervisory Board's support of the future project. Before we then enter into the general debate, Dr. Zetsche will report on the past financial year and outline the tasks of the future. For the detailed report of the Supervisory Board on the past financial year, please allow me to refer you to the report of the Supervisory Board on page 46 of this annual report. You will also find the remuneration report and the detailed corporate governance report in the annual report. But now to the project future. Dieter, if you please. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, ladies and gentlemen, under agenda item 9, we see the decision making on the approval of the contract on this um, spinning off of assets and liabilities to the Mercedes Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG. Now, behind this heading, we find one of the largest restructuring in the history of German industry. Internally at Daimler, this restructuring is being called Project Future. As a basis of information and as a basis for your decision making, we offer a comprehensive documentation that we have made available to you in different, uh, through different channels. The documentation on the one hand consists of the spin-off agreement with approximately 100 pages of contractual text that we sent to you together with the invitation for this annual general meeting. This contract on top of that comprises more than 7,000 pages of annexes that are available for download on our website. And uh, on top of that, the invitation to this annual general meeting also um, comprises a summary of the main points uh, of the annexes. And on the other hand, this documentation, uh, the uh, documentation also consists of uh, the spin-off uh, report, and uh, this, on more than 250 pages, um, contains legal and economic explanations as well as the reasoning for the spin-off. But against this backdrop, I will limit myself to um, the most important aspects here. First, uh, the starting position, secondly, the target, and and thirdly, the implementation. As you know, the operative business of the time the um, group is now being divided into five different divisions, Mercedes-Benz cars, Mercedes-Benz vans, Daimler trucks, Daimler buses, and Daimler financial services. While the activities of financial services even today are legally independent, the other operative divisions in Germany are mainly part of the Daimler AG. We now have been acting in historically grown corporate structures, but for the future, we want to make this company more focused, more agile, and more transparent. The operative business activities of the Daimler Group in the future shall be then led in three legally independent units under the umbrella of the Daimler AG as the mother company. The operative business activities of the divisions Mercedes-Benz cars and Mercedes-Benz vans in the future shall be made part of the Mercedes-Benz AG. The operative business activities of the divisions Daimler trucks as well uh, shall be part of Daimler truck AG. And Evo Bus will also become part of that as part of the spin-off agreement. On top of that, there will be an allocation of the uh, participations in, in Germany as well as abroad to the Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG. Daimler AG in its future structure shall have the function of an operative management holding. The planned new structure is an important component of our overall strategy. With our strategic building blocks core, case, culture and company, we have created the preconditions for aligning our efforts even more consistently along the wishes of our customers. The objective of the 5C strategy of Daimler's is to try and uh, 
reposition our company for the challenges and the opportunities of the new era of mobility and to remain a leading manufacturer of vehicles and at the same time become a leading supplier of mobility services. Against this backdrop, there are a number of good reasons that speak for the new structure of the Daimler Group. Let me give you five central arguments. First of all, we will, uh, of course, focus even more strongly on the needs of our customers in the future because the legally independent business divisions with their own decision-making bodies will allow for even greater proximity to the customer and also to be more focused in working on the markets. Secondly, we can make sure to be even more agile and more flexible in the future because the fact that we will have uh, legally independent divisions and units allows us to uh, react quicker to uh, developments in a shorter time and to develop the fitting offers. Third, so thirdly, um, it, we will make it easier to enter into future corporations and partnerships because the Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG are as independent business units appealing corporation partners. On top of that, this new structure will offer more leeway for further structural changes that may become necessary in the um, competitive environment in dynamic markets. But I would like to underline one thing. The separation of business divisions is not part of this reorganization. Fourth, we will increase the appeal of Daimler at the capital markets because by focusing on our customers' markets and core skills, we can tap into new growth potentials and uh, come up with better results. On top of that, the formation of legally independent business units will help to increase the transparency of the individual parts of the company. And fifth, as a family of companies under a common roof and three strong pillars, we will secure existing synergies and at the same time will also retain the cloud of the overall group. Group. What is clear is that a reorganization in this scope is, of course, connected to substantial costs. According to uh, current forecasts, the one-time costs will amount to approximately 610 million euros, comprising transactions and uh, consultancy costs, staff costs, function-specific costs, and, of course, the tax burden in connection with the necessary transactions. Because of the complexity of the project and the uncertainties connected to it, we, at the same time, need to form a um, the reserve of up to 15% in order to balance um, out potential risks. And in this way, we come up with a current cost estimate of approximately 700 million in total. Apart from that, because of the necessary restructuring, there will be an increase in the running costs until 2020. Based on current plannings, there will be an increase of the yearly running costs by approximately 155 million euros. In, um, on, on top of that, we need to have a reserve of approximately additional 10%. We are planning to uh, set off uh, the uh, increase of the running costs in the midterm. And for that, uh, the uh, board of the Daimler AG, together with the future boards of the Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG, will define comprehensive measures. Because of the legal regulatory um, balance sheet and uh, tax requirements that need to be taken into account, the um, timelines and the individual transaction steps we um, and the operative implications we are talking about a very complex restructuring project, and such a project, of course, also leads to certain financial operative and uh, risks in time that, uh, in, despite a very thorough review and preparation, cannot be fully excluded. All of these points have been looked into carefully and weighing off potential advantages against disadvantages, and uh, we have come to the conclusion, together with the supervisory board, that the restructuring offers further growth and profitability opportunities for the company. And with that, I will now come to the question of how to implement the reorganization and what kind of effects it may have. Now, the spin-off is the central step for the new structure based on three pillars under the umbrella of the Daimler AG. Assets and liabilities of the Mercedes-Benz cars and Mercedes-Benz vans will be transferred to Mercedes-Benz AG and the divisions of, of, from the divisions Daimler trucks and Daimler buses to the Daimler truck AG. This uh, spin-off will become effective with the registering of the Daimler AG and the commercial register, which is planned for the end of October 2019. In order to achieve our objectives, we also need to take certain measures after the, sp uh, the spin-off, especially further um, group companies shall be transferred to the Mercedes-Benz AG or Daimler Truck AG, respectively. And towards the end of January 2020, the uh, implementation will have uh, progressed quite substantially. The legal basis for the spin-off is the spin-off agreement between the Daimler AG and the Mercedes-Benz 
Defense AG and the Daimler Truck AG, which was uh, concluded and notarized on the 25th of March 2019. As a core, this uh, spin off contract regulates uh, the transfer of assets and liabilities of the Daimler AG to the Mercedes Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG. It describes and specifies that part of the uh, assets of the Daimler AG that will be transferred to the Mercedes Benz AG and that part which shall be transferred to the Daimler Truck AG. And it's, it's at the same time being clarified that there are certain assets that will remain within the Daimler AG. Now, with a view to the assets that are being transferred, we are speaking of two larger blocks. These are the um, operative uh, foundations of the operative business activities of the Daimler AG in uh, Germany, as well as the participation in foreign and domestic partnerships and uh, capital societies. Now, the exact specification of the um, assets and liabilities to be transferred are displayed in the comprehensive annexes uh, that give you an impression of the scope of the spin-off. But some assets are explicitly exempt from the transfer to these new societies and will remain within the Daimler AG. This has something to do with the fact that certain co corporate functions will still be carried out by the Daimler AG. Examples for this are, for example, corporate strategy, corporate functions, treasury and tax, the compliance organization, the area HR services, central IT functions, as well as company communications, the purchasing of non-production materials, as well as the division of corporate business services. These central functions will also in the future remain part of the Daimler AG and will offer services for all the different divisions across the group. And also other um, individual assets will remain with the Daimler AG because they're needed for the whole group or can be administered more efficiently at the level of the Daimler AG. Here we're, for example, talking about multi-use IP rights. These patents, brands or other immaterial goods rights shall be available for use uh, across the whole Daimler group. And in the future, they will be centrally administered by a Daimler brand and IP management GmbH and KKG. The transfer of uh, the assets will become effective with the spin-off agreement after the registering and the commercial registry of the Daimler AG. And as I already mentioned, we are planning to do this at the end of 20, October 2019. And the internal relation between Daimler AG and the Mercedes-Benz AG and all the Daimler Truck AG, respectively, the transfer of these assets for um, the balance sheet purposes will happen on the 1st of January 2019 at midnight. Uh, that is the due date. And at this point in time, uh, the business of the Daimler AG and the assets for um, will then be calculated as part of Mercedes-Benz AG or the Daimler Truck AG. The spin-off contract, of course, also defines what will be offered in return for the transfer. The, the Daimler AG will become the sole shareholder of the Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG. And for this purpose, Mercedes-Benz AG will increase its stock capital to 1 billion euro and the Daimler Truck AG its uh, stock capital to 300 million euros. Apart from these core parts of the spin-off contract, I would like to underline two further points that uh, allow you to look into the future concerning certain elements of the legal relationships and the new structure. First of all, the uh, spin-off um, agreement quite explicitly mentions that in the future there will be an exchange of uh, services with uh, between the Daimler AG, Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG and other corporate societies. For this, uh, we will in the future also use our um, proven guidelines and we will thus make sure that the exchange of services will be uh, based on uniform conditions across the group. The spin-off contract also explains in detail the possible effects of the spin-off for the employees and their representatives. And uh, this uh, is the most important effect is probably the passing over of uh, operations to Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG. Here we have agreed on a balancing of interest according to which the uh uh, works constitutional allocation uh, to all the different uh, locations will remain unchanged because of joint operations. And we also have the in-company agreements and the, uh, and the collective bargaining agreements that will remain unchanged. Another important element is the balancing uh, of interests, uh, and that also comprises the securing of jobs for all members of the staff of Daimler AG, Mercedes-Benz AG, and the Daimler Truck.
Luxembourg AG until the 31st of December 2029. Uh, but this uh, job security guarantee is only valid for employees that uh, agree with their transfer of their employment rations. And this brings me back to the question of what kind of effects this uh, spin-off uh, will have on our company and how the group will look like in the future. The uh, Daimler AG in, the future, in its future structure will have the, the function of an operative management holding and as a strong mother company it will also decide on the strategy of the uh, group and in its uh, operative business it will also decide on strategic important things and uh, such, um, subjects and topics. And, um, we will also have uh, legal compliance functions at that level. And here the Daimler AG will have a core of employees of 6,000 uh, staff that will remain here. 2,000 will um, then work in governance imp impulse, um, offer impulses and uh, Thus, we will make sure that uh, the profits of uh, the company will be paid to the Daimler AG and that they will be made available for the payment of dividends. And uh, be, uh, because of the existence of a contractual group, we will also be able to um, have a uniform governance and compliance standards. The Mercedes-Benz AG, in its future structure, as an independent society, will have a core of employees of 104,000 um, employees and eight um, domestic production locations in 94 German-owned retail uh, locations and with its own administrative uh, locations. And uh, the Daimler Truck AG in its future uh, structure will have its um, 26,000 members of staff and four domestic production sites, 26 German-owned retail uh, locations and its own administrative locations. The area of Daimler Financial Services will in the future also be its own division that in parallel to the restructuring of Daimler Financial Services AG will have the new name Daimler Mobility. And even if that division uh, is not affected by this uh, spin-off, it will see a significant improvement of structures. Now, the activities of this uh, division will be bundled in two societies, mainly Daimler Mobility AG, that in its business model will offer integrated financial mobility services, and the Leonie FSDB BGMBH, under which uh, most of the financial services and mobility societies are to be bundled in the future. Now, in perspective, a merger of the these two companies is also possible. Now let me also briefly say something about the governance in the future time in the group. The becoming effective of the spin-off effect will in itself not have an effect on the composition of the management board and the supervisory board of the Daimler-Benz AG. The Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG, after becoming effective, will become German and the publicly listed companies subject to co-determination. The um, supervisory board will then uh, be comprised of 20 members, 10 of which will be representatives of the shareholders and 10 of employees. Now, with a view to the future composition, of the uh, committees of the Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG, the um, executive board has agreed with the supervisory board, so I would like to at this point refer to Manfred Bischoff, who will explain this in a moment. With a view to the balance sheet effects, we also offer um, detailed information um, according to HDB and IFRS, uh, which I would like to refer to at this point, but with a view to the um, balance sheet effects, we can uh, roughly say that the spin uh, off will have the following effects. Uh, with the uh, with a view to the Daimler AG, there will be a reduction of assets and uh, liabilities that will become part of the Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG, and uh, these assets and liabilities can be found in the balance sheets for the spin-off uh, that we could find in the annexes. Now, currently, the uh, HDB balance sheet of the Daimler AG and uh, the investment book values of the Mercedes-Benz AG and the Daimler Truck AG will be increased, uh, and, uh, as well as uh, the equity capital. Capital. As a result of the uh, balance sheet effects of the spin-off on the HDB balances and the pro forma uh, explanations will become effective on the due date of the 1st uh, of January 2019. It will not have an impact on the uh, consolidated financial statements IFRS um, because it is an internal uh, uh, effect, and then this uh, explanation is based on the business figures of 2018 and uh, supposes that the uh, legally independent partial companies had already existed in 2018. In order to explain this, uh, we can also point here to the forecast of the revenue situation of the new partial companies and the 
intended uh, level of implementation 2020 uh, based on the uh, turnover and EBIT key performance indications. And this, again, is based on the numbers of the fiscal year 2018. It does not in conclude a forecast with a view to the future revenue situation. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, as I initially um, mentioned, the executive board and the supervisory board are convinced that the reorganization of the Daimler Group is a central setting of tracks and that will help us to secure the structure of our group for the challenges of the future. And against this backdrop, we ask you to please give us your approval concerning the item number nine on the agenda and concerning the spin-off uh, contract. And of course, I can only talk about certain aspects during this explanation, but we were glad to answer your questions during our general debate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dieter. I have already explained that these uh, formal explanations will have to be done because of the German Transformation Act, so you had to green and bear it, if I may put it like this. But let me also add and say right away that the CEO and I myself um, are speaking with a slightly um, hoarse voice. That's nothing to do with the issues. It's simply the fact that we both suffer from the cold, but we both assure you that we haven't given it to each other. Now, dear shareholders, ladies and gentlemen, after these explanations given by Dieter Zetscher on the project future, I would like to provide to you uh, additional aspects which relate to the restructuring of the company from the point of view of the supervisory board, which is also my, my job. Let me tell you, first of all, that um, uh, the supervisory board agrees and supports with what been set without any reservation. And let me restrict myself right now to uh, tell you that uh, Project Future has been very much uh, provided uh, in flanking support by the supervisor group with the grant to the structure to be set up and the, the bodies and its compositions. From the very beginning, the supervisory board has been closely involved in the thoughts about the restructuring of Daimler. In June 2017, the board of management informed the supervisory board about looking at the general feasibility as well as the pros and cons, the divisional structure of the company and group uh, to uh, set up legally independent units. In October 2017, the supervisory board granted its um, agreement to a further uh, re-examination and to institute initial measures to start this new divisional structure. Later, the supervisory board was continually informed about the progress of those preparatory measures. The agreement to the implementation of the project future was granted after substantial uh, exchanges with the board of management, which happened at the end of July 2018. On the 22nd of March 2019, the supervisory board finally, after profound examination, agreed to the conclusion of the spin-off agreement while simultaneously passing the agenda set for today's AGM. Now, let me tell you about the thoughts that the Supervisory Board and Management Board um, followed when looking at the future structure. Mercedes-Benz AG as well as Daimler Trump AG, after the spin-off will become effective, which we presume to be October this year, will be a co-determined in German sharing companies. The supervisory board of both these companies will then comprise of 20 members as per statutes, of which 10 are representatives of the shareholders and 10 representatives of the employees. When it comes to selecting the employee representative, which is a rather time-consuming process, because uh, only when the spin-off agreement will have become effective is it possible to elect these employee representatives. So uh, both the union and uh, the management have decided that we will implement co-determination on an informal basis in advance of these happenings. So both Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Trap AG will, before the spin-off becomes effective, therefore have to have the supervisory boards added to, to make 20 members each. In 2019, February, at the AGM of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG, 
These bodies are to be constituted. At the same time, the employees are to, are to suggest representatives will send to the supervisory boards of both Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG. In this way, a continuing work of the supervisory board will become possible while integrating and involving employee representatives before the co-determination uh, co law would make possible such an election. Because of the envis envisaged personnel composition of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG supervisory boards, let me point you to the explanations given in the uh, spin-off agreement report where you will also find employee representation comments. Both uh, Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG say that probably by September 2019 a decision will be made as to the composition of these boards without uh, prioritizing such decisions, but with a view of the concrete composition of the supervisory boards of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG, an agreement is to be reached between the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board of uh, the companies involved. When giving thought to the future composition of Supervisory Boards and Management Boards of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG, uh, Daimler AG's Board of Management and Supervisory Board have uh, looked at the efficiency of the work at different bodies, the experience and qualification of the possible members to serve on these newly to be appointed bodies, their characters and competences. Both the supervisory boards and the boards of management of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG are expected to comprise individuals who've already had um, a seat on the either supervisor or management board of uh, the current company. This is an interlinkage which will prove to be more efficient and help a more efficient uh, composition of jobs and competences within these boards. This will apply equally to representatives of shareholders and employees. Against this backdrop, the envisaged boards will comprise members of the supervisor board and the board of um, management of Daimler AG and experienced uh, uh, executive level personnel from the organization mentioned. Everybody else will also be a member of Daimler AG boards or uh, experienced members of the leadership groups. Supervisor Board and Board of Management of Daimler AG with the reservation of the decision to be made by the Supervisory Board responsible have, however, agreed on a provisional composition of the boards of Mercedes-Benz AG. Ola Kalinius, apart from serving on the board of Daimler AG, will also uh, serve as, is, as we expect as chairman of the Supervisory Board of Mercedes-Benz AG. Ori Potza is going to be be a responsible for supply chain management. Hinata Junge Brücker is also going to be on the board of Mercedes-Benz AG, responsible for integrity and law. Sajat Khan is going to be responsible for Kais and Eva. Uh, Sabine Kohleisen will be responsible for HR. Frank Lindenberg is going to be responsible for finance and controlling. Marco Schäfer, as at Daimler AG level, will also serve as the, uh, the board of Mercedes-Benz AG, where again he will be responsible for research and development. Rita Sega, again, mirroring her, her current job, will also serve as Mercedes-Benz AG sales. Member of the board. Given the investment composition of the board of Mercedes-Benz AG and with the intended um, distribution of uh, board functions, I would like to inform you of one change which has uh, evolved since the publication of the board. Rico Stark, who previously has worked at Mercedes-Benz Gas, responsible for sales and supply quality, supplier quality, uh, has informed Ola Kalinius in mid-April that he does not wish uh, to hold um, this board function in the future, Mercedes-Benz AG. With a view to this new development, the current plan is that Mercedes-Benz AG will not have a specific uh, board function for um, procurement and uh, supply quality. Marco Schäfer is going to take over this function. He will already uh, serve as a member of the board for research and development. At the level of Daimler Truck AG, Board and Supervisory Board of Daimler AG have agreed on the provisional composition, namely Martin Down, apart from serving on the board of Daimler AG, will be the possible chairman of Daimler Truck AG. 
Stefan Buchner is going to be on the board of Daimler Truck AG, for, uh, responsible for the regions Europe, um, Latin America, Europe, and the Mercedes Brands Band. Uh, Stefan Ida is going to be responsible for development and procurement. Jochen Goetz is going to be responsible for finance and controlling. Jürgen Hartwig is going to be responsible for HR. Uh, Roger Nielsen is going to be responsible for NAFTA as well as uh, Freightliner Western Star and uh, Thomas Bill Bassis. Hartmut Chick is going to be responsible for the region Asia, Fuso, and Parabens. Board and Supervisory Board of Daimler um, AG are convinced that with these uh, suggested um, composition of the board, we will have the right people and the best possible competencies for these newly to be set up boards. As a last point, let me tell you something about uh, the board members of the level of Mercedes-Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG. Here again, it is true that the remuneration of um, the members of the boards uh, of the two companies, uh, the relevant bodies will Will decide uh, on its own just what that remuneration should be. Irrespective of this, uh, the Board of Management and Supervisory Board of Daimler AG have looked into the remuneration of the board members for Mercedes Benz AG and Daimler Truck AG so that this will be aligned with the newly to be decided remuneration system for the. Um, board of Daimler uh, AG, and also in alignment with the um, remuneration system valid for executive um, personnel of the Daimler Group. The remuneration system for board members, therefore, should also uh, have one fixed and two variable components. In addition, the, uh, the annual bonus, apart from financial targets, should also follow non-financial targets and transformation targets. Details about this can be found in the spin-off report. The envisaged remuneration of members of the boards of the new companies will, by and large, follow the current remuneration of board members at the level of Daimler AG. The intention is that the supervisory board members of Mercedes-Benz AG will receive a fixed remuneration amounted to 60 percent, supervisory board members of Daimler Truck AG, a fixed remuneration amounting to 50 percent of the supervisory board members uh, currently paid to members of Daimler AG boards. Uh, more details, again, can be found in the spin-off report. Please bear in mind that members of the board of Daimler AG, who are also at the same time members of the supervisory board of Mercedes-Benz AG or of Daimler Truck AG, uh, AG respectively, will not receive additional remuneration um, as members of either the uh, board of management or supervisory board of Mercedes-Benz AG or Daimler Truck AG, respectively. The same is true for functions held by executive members of Daimler AG in bodies of Mercedes-Benz AG and or Daimler Truck AG. By contrast, external members of the supervisory board of Daimler AG, as the spin of agreement discloses and as the report uh, also describes, will receive additional remuneration for holding a dual mandate. Ladies and gentlemen, before I come to the end, let me emphasize once again that the supervisory board uh, expressly welcomes the new, um, newly planned structure of a Daimler group. Together with the supervisory board, we are convinced that this is the right way of making the group fit for the future mobility challenges. Against this backdrop, the supervisory board agrees with the proposal and um, agrees with the uh, spin-off agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have achieved so far and how we want to prepare for the future is something which, after these uh, somewhat lengthy explanations, which sadly had to be done because of the Articles of the Association, Dr. Chetzer will now tell you more details about that. You have the floor. Dear shareholders, esteemed shareholder representatives, ladies and gentlemen, in my first speech before the annual meeting in 2006, I said, our aim is to put the company back at the top. Are we living up to this claim today? In many areas, yes. In some others, not yet, or at least not sustainably. For example, we are not satisfied with the latest quarterly results 
and our share price. Overall, however, Daimler has made significant progress in recent years. In this process, we have gone through different phases together. For a time, we were active troubleshooters. We refocused the company to what we do best. Vehicles that convince rationally and inspire emotionally. And then we went on the offensive. With Mercedes-Benz, we wanted to lead the premium segment by 2020. We have been number one since 2016. In the commercial vehicle segment, we were able to further build on our leading position. This offensive was not an end in itself. With it, we have built up the strength we need in order to take on the leading role for the much greater task, the transformation of the automotive industry. To do so, we have initiated the greatest change in our history. This transformation is in full swing and it encompasses our products and technologies as well as our business model and corporate culture. The change of our company will be most visible in our product offerings. For example, our passenger car portfolio now includes more than 40 very attractive models. This year alone, we will launch more than a dozen new ones. Our position has never before been as broad or as strong advanced trucks and buses as well in all regions of the world. And then there is also an entire range of new mobility services. Of course, it isn't about doing everything possible. Responsible business also means changing things or ending them when they are no longer meaningful. For example, we will be reducing the complexity of our engine variants for passenger cars. We will thus free up additional funding for new technologies without losing customers. When it comes to drive systems, our strategic focus is on the electrification of our products. For our cars alone, we are putting 10 billion euros into the expansion of our electric fleet. Next month, our first customers will be getting their first EQCs. This is the first Mercedes model from our EQ Electric brand. It is spearheading a new electric era at Mercedes. By 2022, we will charge up the entire Mercedes portfolio with more than 130 electrified variants. To continuously increase the number of electric vehicles in our unit sales, we must inspire more customers with those vehicles. And I I am convinced that we will set new standards with our electric cars. They will offer our customers all of the things they love about Mercedes, along with a unique design, even more driving enjoy enjoyment and even more emotion. We're also moving on with electromobility for our commercial vehicles. We are electrifying all commercial model series of our vans. And after the veto, it's now eSprinter's turn at the starting gate. With the Fuso e Canter, Daimler Trucks was the first manufacturer to bring a fully electric truck into series production. Today, we are testing electrically driven trucks of all classes in daily transport operations. Our goal is clear. As global market leader, we also want to be at the top with our electric trucks. In addition, our e-Citara has been in serious production since the end of 2018. That's our electric city bus. Amidst the ongoing discussion about air pollution control in the cities, it came along at just the right time. All of this proves that we are anchoring sustainability even more firmly in our strategy. Our goal is to act sustainably in all areas of business, from conserving resources and complying with environmental regulations to data protection and respect for human rights. At present, however, the main focus of our attention is on the low-emission car. This is because the number of vehicles on the roads will continue to rise as a result of global demand. Emissions must therefore be reduced all the more urgently. The Paris Climate Agreement is more than just a commitment for us. It is a conviction. We have chosen a clear course of action in order to contribute our part to climate protection. As early as 2022, we will have CO2-neutral production in Europe.
and our entire new vehicle fleet will be CO2 neutral by 2040. We will drive our supply chain to follow our ambition. We are developing similar transformation plans for our commercial vehicles. Against this backdrop, we are continuously re-examining our policy positions and those of the associations in which we are a member. The transformation to, sustain, to sustainable mobility of the future can only be successful if industry and government work hand in hand. On the way there, we should make use of all available means for rapid reduction of CO2 emissions, including highly efficient combustion engines and, in particular, diesel. The modern diesel engine hasn't been a significant source of particulate matter for years. Today, the NOx challenge is technically resolved. At the same time, diesel vehicles still have a clear CO2 advantage over compatible gasoline-driven vehicles. The diesel engine is part of the solution. That is why we assume it will continue to play an important role in Europe for at least another decade, maybe even longer in the commercial vehicles area. The mobility of the future is not a monoculture. This is also because the technological transformation in our industry goes way beyond new drive systems. Connectivity, for example, is an important purchase consideration for a growing number of customers. With MBUX, we elevate connectivity at Mercedes to a completely new level. We have developed the system continuously from the start and have introduced such things as gesture control. People used to say that cars would never be able to keep up with smartphones because of the long development cycles. Today, we can say with MBUX, we have transformed the vehicle into the often quoted smartphone on wheels. New functions get their updates over the air, that is, without customers having to drive to their service workshop. Regardless of the year in which the vehicle was purchased, the software is thus always up to date. And customers are willing to pay for this capability. Two thirds of all A class customers are order the high-end version of MBUX. Autonomous driving will change our mobility even more powerfully than connectivity. In this regard, our central concern is to further improve road safety, as most accidents are attributable to human error. The technology has the potential of preventing or mitigating many of these accidents. Experts speak of five levels of automated driving. We have already had level two or semi-automated driving in series production for some time. With the upcoming S-Class in 2020, we will take the next step. At level three, the car will be able to drive completely independently on longer stretches of highway. At the same time, we're also developing the technology for level four and five, which is designed from the start for use in autonomous shuttle services. We will launch such a pilot project in California later this year. We initiated the transformation from automotive manufacturer to mobility services provider about 10 years ago. Now we want to advance into new spheres with new partners. All innovation processes are associated with opportunities and risks. The invention of the light bulb was to the detriment of the candle. And since Google, most lexicons are now collecting dust. But in retrospect, it is undisputable that both innovations have created significantly more jobs than they have cost. This will also happen with the future of mobility. Yes, some jobs will no longer exist in the future, but they will be replaced by new tasks. That's why we are investing in the continuing education and training of our employees. And we are bringing additional expertise on board. In the last year and a half, we have hired around a thousand new people in the IT area alone. Overall, thanks to our successful growth, today we employ nearly 300,000 people at Daimler. This number represents 300,000 individual men and women who get work and a good income from your company. I think that we can all be proud of.
We are guaranteeing our workers in Germany employment until 2030, provided that you agree to the new corporate structure today and the employees do not object to the operational transfers. The confidence in our ability to keep such promises is also one result of the successes and decisions of previous years. Ten years ago, Daimler sold 1.6 million vehicles. We now exceed this number in the first half of the year. The most important driver of our growth is China. The market was our Achilles heel for a long time. Today, China is our dynamo, accounting for almost 30% of Mercedes sales. Our biggest plant is there, and our biggest development location outside of Germany is also there. Overall, we have strongly expanded our presence around the world. Today, we have an efficient global network of development and production sites, logistics centers, and service operations. You, dear Chef, shareholders have also profited from these successes. The dividend we are proposing today is the second highest in our company's history. With it, we are offering one of the most attractive dividends in the DAX. If you approve the dividend proposal, we will have paid out a total of 17 billion euros over the past five fiscal years. However, 2018 was a year characterized by strong headwinds for Daimler, from the ongoing diesel discussion to the WLTP test procedure and global trade. Disputes. In this environment, we were still able to slightly increase unit sales and revenues, but EBIT was significantly below the previous year's level. The difficult framework conditions were also reflected in our stock price. Since the beginning of the year, Daimler's share price has stabilized again. With a gain of almost 14 percent, it has clearly developed better than the automotive industry as a whole, yet it is clear that we can do better. Looking at our quarterly numbers, our start to the year 2019 has been moderate. This was expected, but it doesn't make it any in particular, we cannot and will not be satisfied, satisfied with the current level of profitability. I can assure you the Daimler team is drawing even more motivation to work with full energy toward our annual targets. We want to slightly increase unit sales and earnings. Still, it is also true that the framework conditions will not become any less complex. Along with external factors, we are now also feeling the financial effects of the company's transformation. Over the past five years, our annual investments have risen by more than 50 percent. At Mercedes-Benz Cars, we have nearly doubled the research and development expenditures. The new additional technologies in the vehicle have their price. This also means that mobility will be more costly in the future. Our job as a company is to limit the increase for our customers. To do so, we have to cut costs and increase the efficiency throughout the company. Everything is under scrutiny, fixed and variable costs, material and personnel costs, investment projects, vertical integration and the product range. The first measures are already being implemented. The goal is to return Mercedes-Benz cars and vans into the profitability corridor of 8 to 10 percent by 2021. At Daimler trucks and Daimler buses, the goal is to achieve a sustainable return of 8 percent and to unlock further potential. Cooperation is also an important key for higher efficiency. We don't have to do everything alone. Through partnerships, we increase our strength and share costs. We have already taken important steps in that direction. We have joined forces with BMW and mobility services. Together, we will also develop the next generation of the technology needed for automated driving. With Geely, we are putting a new ride-hailing service on the road in China. And we are writing the next chapter of the smart brand together. By entering new segments, and embarking on a new course of growth. Whether such corporations will be successful is not just a question of technology, it is also a question of attitude. 
How do we succeed in combining our claim to perfection with the required speed and the high propensity for risk? Are we, as managers, ready not only to promote the startup spirit, but also to exemplify it as role models? Do we promote change even when it isn't dictated from above, but arises from below? In order to find the right answers to such questions, we created Leadership 2020 three years ago. Cultural transformation is difficult to measure, but I am convinced of this. What we have achieved thus far is already unique in the long history of our company. Today, we are faster and more flexible. We have more courage to take risks. We promote even greater creativity, pioneering spirit, and individual freedom of action. And we are far from finished. We want to continue empowering the desire for change and openness for new things in the entire company. That may not always be comfortable or easy, but it will help us make progress. Someone who never went for the easy way was Niki Lauda. I know that not everyone in this hall is a Formula One fan, but this extraordinary personality shows that our motorsports commitment is about more than just lap times. Nikki celebrated huge successes in life, but he also knew how to deal with defeats. And every time, he showed how big a fighter's heart he had. We could use more of that in our company and beyond. And we see that in many parts of society, there is a different tendency towards withdrawal rather than openness and fear rather than optimism. The European elections begin tomorrow. The expected outcome has rarely been so open. However, what Europe needs now is reliable policy from the center of society. All major issues can only be resolved at a European level, from climate protection to migration and trade issues. National egotism won't get us anywhere, not in Europe and not anywhere else. This also applies to trade policies because protectionism is bad for sales as well as for integrated value chains. Today there is virtually no complex product that is made in isolation in only one country. That's why it is not possible to seal off an economy without shutting it down. Those who promise something else to the voters are wrong or lying and both are bad prerequisites for good politics. Dear shareholders, if Daimler is further ahead today than ever before in so many respects, it is thanks to the tremendous achievements of generations of dedicated employees. They have built and developed the business over 130 years in good times and times that weren't so great. I had the privilege of contributing to and helping to direct this course for more than four decades, and I would like to thank everyone in the company for their passion and their untiring efforts. With the invention of the automobile, the founding fathers of your company have moved much more than people and goods. If we want to change the world once again, and for the better, then Daimler must also continue to change. Today, we are a different company than 10 years ago. We will be a different company again in 10 years' time. And there are many good reasons why I am quite confident about this transformation. One reason is the fact that in the last few months we successfully completed one of the most difficult and simultaneously more important tasks. The orderly transition at the top of the company with an excellent new management team. That is why at this point I would only like to do two things. First, I would also like to thank the supervisory board and you, our shareholders, for your trust and your support in the past years. And secondly, 
I would like to ask you to give Ola Kalenius and his management team the same constructive and trusted support for their course. I am firmly convinced Ola is the right man for the job who will successfully lead our company into the future, and I am looking forward to watching this with a bit more distance. Thank you very much.